Well, hello again, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about a couple of different other types of modulations. We've talked briefly in class about common tone modulations, whereas you keep uh, one pitch the same in a chord or in a key and let it become the sustaining pitch over and then taking on a new role in a different key, much the same way that chords might pivot. You can have a single pitch pivoting as well. Uh, there is also such a thing as chromatic pivot chord modulations. We've talked about those briefly in the past where a secondary chord of some kind can become the primary chord in a new key or a different secondary chord. There is also the possibility of what's called the mixture pivot, where say you're in a key of A major and you get a minor one and then that gets inharmonically reinterpreted as say a two in the key of G major. I'm thinking of the opening of the bridge of Begin the Begin by Cole Porter for an example of that sort of thing. And we'll, we'll look at some of these in class as well. The two I wanted to put up here where we can actually kind of concentrate on what's going on are chromatic modulations by inharmonic respelling of diminished seventh chords and augmented sixth chords. So I have a couple of brief examples here. For example, in the first uh, measure here, first couple measures, you see uh, seven, six, five going to one in the key of E minor. Notice the voice leading here. Here's the root of the chord, the D sharp, moving up to E. A uh, third of the chord is the F sharp, descending down to the double the tonic. Uh, the fifth of the chord, the A, descending down to create the third of the one chord, and then the seventh descending to become the fifth. It's not a parallel because this is a diminished fifth, F sharp to C, and this is a perfect fifth, so we're okay there, and let's remind ourselves what that sounds like. Let's get a little more volume. Pretty straight ahead. But what if we wrote certain pitches in that structure inharmonically? What does that mean? Let's take, for example, what if we reinterpreted the D-sharp as an E-flat? Now, all of a sudden, is this a 7-6-5 anymore? Well, inharmonically it is, but if you just look at the raw spelling, F-sharp would be the root. F-sharp, A, C, E-flat. So this isn't a 6-5 in the key of E minor anymore. If F-sharp is root, we have to think of this as being a 7 in the key of G minor. So it comes down to how it is spelled in harmonically speaking. And that would resolve like this. Not G minor. Yeah, G minor. So, I mean, it could be G major as well. Uh, let me line up everything here. We'll take care of what's going on. It looks out of alignment here. We'll fix that as we go along here. But the same chord can be inharmonically reinterpreted as a seven, fully diminished seven in root position going to G minor. And that's the smoothest motion. What if we turn that F sharp into a G flat? Now all of a sudden, A is the root. And again, let's not worry about the numbers just yet, but if A is the root, then that's going to be a half step away from B flat. So A, C resolves down to the B flat as well. G flat is going to resolve down to an F natural and E flat is going to resolve to a D flat. It could go to a D natural as well, but we'll keep it minor key for consistency here. And now all of a sudden, instead of being a five, six, five going to one in the key of E minor, or a five, seven in going to one, or a seven diminished seven going to one in G minor, now we're in the key of B flat minor. And instead of being a 6-5 in that key, it's a 4-2, because the seventh of the chord A is the root. G flat is the seventh is the root position. And that makes this a you guessed it. A 6-4. So a Chord resolving 7 to 7, 7 to 4, 2 resolving to a 1, 6, 4 in the key of B flat minor. 
And if we do it again, reinterpret the A as B double flat. Now C is the root C, E flat, G flat, B double flat. And this ends up being 5, 4, 3, or 7 diminished 4, 3. Give myself a little space to work here. In D flat minor. Let's see how that resolves. Now the root resolves there. G still resolves downward by a half step to uh, that, or it could be to an F flat. If we're going to be in minor, we should make that an F flat, make it consistent. And then and we end up with that. So now we end up with this. Space these out a little better here. Seven four three going to O one six. So we were able to, using the same chord, resolve it multiple ways, depending on how we respelled it in harmonically. And in the modulation, you wouldn't even have to necessarily respell it in harmonically. You would just have to resolve it to whatever your target chord is. So let's listen to this line here. There's your 7th diminished 6, 5 to 1 in E minor, 7 diminished 7 to 1 in G minor, 7 diminished 4, 2 to 1, 6, 4 in B flat minor, 7 diminished 4, 3 to 1, 6 in D flat minor. Notice it works. Let's listen to them all again without me talking. You can get a little more volume. That's pretty awesome stuff. Let's take a look now at another chord which lends itself to a certain amount of inharmonicism, and that would be the German augmented sixth chord. The normal resolution of a German augmented sixth chord is, of course, to the cadential 6 4. So you can see here we're in the key of B flat major. Let's listen to that. be modulated somewhere. We get some extra pitches in there. Let me get that correctly. There we go. There we go. Let's try that again. We apologize for the inconvenience. Yeah. German augmented 6 resolving to a cadential 6-4. That's what we expect to do. Remember that the augmented 6 interval here is G flat to E natural. Count the number of half steps in that, you'll find that it's 10 half steps. Another chord, another interval that contains 10 half steps is the minor 7. They're going to sound exactly the same, but if you resolve them differently, if you write and resolve them differently, they move in a different direction. For example, if we see this chord here, same chord, but I've written the E natural as an F flat, now all of a sudden this happens. F flat is a chordal sevenths. Chordal sevenths want to do what? That's right, move downward. Uh, G flat is the root. It wants to do this. B flat is now the leading tone. It wants to do this. And we could put that in parentheses there if we wanted to, um, depending on how you resolve the leading tone. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's get some parentheses up here. So we count the middle one in parentheses if we wanted to. Um, let's give ourselves a little more room here so we can see what we're doing. But when it's different this time, it's because this is no longer a German augmented six in the key of B flat, but rather it's a five seven. Going to one in the key of C flat. So blam, I just modulated up a half step. Listen to uh, bars 9, 10, and 11, 12 here. The first two bars are German augmented 6 resolving to the cadential 6, 4. Second two bars are the same chord, but respelled as a 5, 7 in C flat. 
resolving to 1. Give this a listen. Pretty slick when you think about it. So this opens up all sorts of modulatory possibilities. You can write it as a German augmented 6, but resolve it as a 1 chord up a half step. And the true, in the, it would work in reverse as well. If I did something like this, let's let's get a key up here. Let's make it interesting. How about A major? That's a good key. Good key for country and western music. Uh, if I write an augmented or a major minor seventh, the dominant seventh, that's going to resolve you know, like this. But if I write that same chord as an augmented sixth, well, then my seventh is E to D, so I have to rewrite that augmented sixth as it's going to write it as an E double flat, and I do it, so I'll have to do it this way. Um, A C double sharp instead, then this is going to resolve very nicely. Augmented six resolves up a half step to D sharp. Something like that. And then that's a augmented six chord in the key of ooh, G sharp major if we do it that way which is one of those keys that would be very weird, so we could probably make that a G sharp minor and feel pretty good about it. It's a little less hairy. Or we could write the whole thing in harmonically as an augmented six in the key of A flat major, and that would make a lot of sense as well. Let's listen to these two. So we're doing the same thing we did here in 9, 10, 11, 12, but in reverse. So we start with a 5, 7, and then harmonically reinterpret it as an augmented six. So here it is as a major minor seventh and as an augmented sixth. So there are a lot of interesting things we can do here. Uh, if you have any questions about things, please feel free to drop me an email or come by office hours. And everyone have a great day.